Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, flowers mark the spot where an SUV hit and killed eight people at a bus stop in Brownsville. This uh, SUV just comes through, hits part of the, uh, the curb and runs over everyone. Up next on GMSA, how the incident factors into the end of Title 42, which expires on Thursday. Well, outside with live cam this morning, plenty of humidity. And don't forget that uh, May is one of our wettest months of the year. And it sounds like this week is going to live up to the billing. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is May 8th. How was your weekend? It was good. Uh, a little humid and hot, but, but good. What about you? Not bad at all. And uh, this morning we're hovering right around 71 degrees. So you see we're kind of leaning into that summer pattern now as yes. we wrap up, uh, you know, spring here, 2023. Saturday. <laughs> That humidity. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness gracious. Then yesterday with the cloud cover and the little white showers here and there yep. stayed in low 80s. It was it was fantastic. Worked out. Today, I'm sorry. Oh, it worked out. Oh, yeah, it worked yeah. out fine. But today's going to be very hot and humid. And as you were talking about May, uh, you know, usually it's April showers bring me. No, this is going to be May showers and thunderstorms and potentially heavy rain. And we're looking at a potentially uh, very wet week, especially on the bookends right now. Yeah, we are starting off very murky out there and we do have a little bit of some leftover rain well down to the south. And this is continuing even a couple of thunderstorms down there. That one little batch of rain is continuing through. Uh, McMullen County over toward Live Oak and that will that'll pretty much be it. Now we do have a couple of little, uh, patches of some fog, maybe a uh, light sprinkle, some mist, the usual situation this morning. And then temperatures, we are way up there, upper 60s, low 70s all around the area, 76 right now in Pleasanton. And most everybody has dew points in the uh, upper 60s, low 70s around here. So yeah, it is very humid. Heat index is going to be something we're going to have to deal with again today. Now, as far as the rest of the morning, pretty much steady temperatures, a patch or two of fog, maybe a little sprinkle, those few showers down there to the south. And later on this afternoon, we're going to start to see a few of those uh, storms develop later on this afternoon, especially out in portions of the hill country. And that's where the majority of them are going to be, even though some will be here in town. Some of those may be on the uh, severe side tonight. Storm Prediction Center has the western half of our viewing area with the at least isolated threat and then a little better threat for severe weather with high winds winds and hail, but then also what we're going to have to look out for is a couple of heavier downpours, especially in the hill country, and then that's going to be the situation at least a few more days coming up this upcoming week. We'll take a look ahead to that as well as Mother's Day weekend, which looks like it's going to be on the wet side. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, an Amber Alert for a San Antonio teenager. The San Antonio Police Department is looking for 14-year-old Jules Robinson. She's five foot six, 130 pounds, has black hair, brown eyes, and was last seen wearing a paper boy hat, black thin frame glasses, a dark colored t-shirt, black Nike shorts, and slip-ons. Last seen around midnight, May 1st, in the 900 block of Classen Pass. That's on the north side near Hebner Road. Law enforcement officials believe this child is to be in grave or immediate danger. If you have any information on Jules Robinson, 14 years old, contact the San Antonio Police Department. This morning, a father is in jail in connection with a shooting that led to the death of his eight-month-old child. Alejandro Martinez is facing charges of injury to a child with serious bodily injury. The shooting happened back on April 12th at an apartment complex on Northeast Loop 410. San Antonio police say Martinez was arguing with the baby's mother when a gun went off and hit the mother and the infant. Both were taken to the hospital. The infant was pronounced dead. The mother was arrested when she was released from the hospital. New information overnight about a deadly crash near the U.S.-Mexico border. A vehicle plowed into a crowd of people at a bus stop near a shelter for migrants, and now an eighth victim has died. As ABC's Lindsay Watts explains, it comes just days before U.S. border policy, which took effect during the pandemic, expires. This morning, candles and flowers mark the spot where an SUV hit and killed eight people at a bus stop in Brownsville, Texas, as authorities investigate whether the crash was an accident or intentional. They were going to the bus station, local bus station, so they can take the bus that was going to take them to their destination. Some of the victims were migrants who had just left a shelter that helps the homeless and people who cross the border. A witness says the driver was yelling insults before accelerating towards the group. This uh, 
SUV just comes through, hits part of the uh, the curve, and runs over everybody. A lot of our, of our other guests that we have here at the shelter uh, got to witness this uh, traumatic incident. The driver, identified by police as a Hispanic man, was taken to the hospital for treatment. Authorities are looking into whether alcohol played a factor, describing the man as very uncooperative, charging him with reckless driving. Well, they're saying that the car lost control. Now, whether we know whether it was an accident or intentional, that is still under investigation. This all comes as Title 42 expires Thursday. The public health order issued during the pandemic allowed Border Patrol to turn away migrants to prevent the spread of COVID. Now authorities are preparing for a spike in migrant crossing, upwards of 10,000 per day. The Biden administration says it's opened more facilities to process migrants, adding immigration officers and sending 1,500 troops to help boost the response effort. It's going to take our plan a while to really take hold for people to understand that they can access lawful, safe, orderly pathways before they reach the border. Under Title 42, most migrants were deported to Mexico with no legal consequences. But when that policy ends Thursday, they may face stiffer penalties if they cross the border illegally. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. This morning, federal officials now looking into whether the gunman who killed eight people at a mall north of Dallas this weekend expressed an interest in white supremacist ideology. The gunman died after a confrontation with police at the Allen Premium Outlets. Witnesses to the shooting reported seeing children among the victims and a scene so horrific that first responders were sickened by it. The shooting, the latest attack to contribute to the unprecedented pace of mass killings this year in the U.S. In our next half hour, we take a look at the gun legislation changes being proposed now at the state capitol in Austin. Several deadlines happening this week, including with the COVID-19 pandemic, the U.S. public health emergency is set to expire on Thursday. The CDC says that means its surveillance methods of COVID will change. The federal agency will now primarily use hospital admissions and wastewater to track COVID levels across the country instead of testing data. As we enter this new phase, experts warn it's still important to stay vigilant. The CDC says it will work. Its work will continue as when normal when it comes to vaccine effectiveness and research into long COVID. U.S. First Lady Jill Biden spent some time at 10 Downing Street in London this weekend. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak welcomed Biden for a lunch get together Sunday. Her visit comes a day after King Charles was crowned at Westminster Abbey. Biden was also joined by her granddaughter, Finnegan Biden. 437, 71 degrees. San Antonio missions return home this week following a win on the road. Up next, a first look at Military Appreciation Night and the other special events at Nelson Wolf Stadium this week. And what's next for the San Antonio Gunslingers, who are still undefeated? Rose with Trans Guys looking over at Highway 281 at Hildebrand, where things are moving at this hour. Pretty quiet still at 4.38 a.m. And outside with live cam. Yeah, plan ahead this week, folks. Keep that umbrella handy. Maybe put one in each vehicle just in case. We'll have much more on Mike's full forecast coming up straight ahead as we get started here on GMSA. Enjoy that first cup of coffee or maybe your second. In morning sports, San Antonio FC has acquired a lot of new faces over the past few weeks, and head coach Alan Marcina said the extra day to prepare really helped them acclimate to San Antonio's style of play. Certainly showed on the field yesterday. Fifth minute, Samuel Adeniran gets some space in the box, stops, and bends one past the keeper inside the far post. Beautiful strike opens the scoring to make it 1-0 SAFC, but Vegas responds in the 19th minute. Andres Jimenez with a perfect through ball to Tabor. Preston behind SA's defense and slots it past Jordan Farr. We're at 1 1 at halftime. Same score, 81st minute, Tanny. Oluwase E turns and fires it under the crossbar for the game winning goal on his SAFC debut. San Antonio FC finally back in the win column with a 2 1 victory. It was a tough game, you know, tough conditions with the pitch and the weather. But I think coming in, we knew what we were going to face. We knew what the conditions were going to be like. So the preparation over the week really put us in the position to go out there and win the game. And that's exactly what we did. We had two great finishes. I think we were unfortunate not to get potentially two, three more um, in the back of that clear cut chances. So we'll continue to build on this. San Antonio FC stays on the road. They'll face the Charleston Battery on their home turf Saturday, 630 p.m. 
SAFC will not play at Toyota Field again until May 27. San Antonio Gunslinger still undefeated after drawing a bye week. San Antonio returned to action on the road against the Fayetteville Mustangs. Quarterback Arvell Nelson accounted for six total touchdowns, four passing, two rushing, and San Antonio wins it 40 to 27. They'll travel to face the West Texas Warbirds on Saturday, May 20th. Our San Antonio Missions entered yesterday's series finale against the Tulsa Drillers looking to snap a seven game losing streak. Offense has been an issue lately and it was not enough this time. Top of the fourth, two on Luis Aviles Jr. sends one high and deep to left. You kiss that ball goodbye. The three run blast highlights a five run inning. That's all the offense they need to win. San Antonio takes it 5-4, improving to 11-15 on the season. Missions return to the Wolf tomorrow to face the Corpus Christi Hooks. On Wednesday, there will be a doubleheader. Game 1 starts at 5.05. It's all to oh, Military Appreciation Night. Friday's matchup will be a Missions hoodie giveaway. Saturday's game will feature post-game fireworks. And Sunday's 105 game will be a bark in the park. <laughs> and that's a look at morning sports. <laughs> I like that. If anyone was asleep, they're awake they're now. They're awake now. They're awake now. You're welcome. <laughs> Time now, 443 and 71 degrees for now. Up next, a first look at a one-on-one -on -one interview with Microsoft founder Bill Gates and what he thinks about the rise of artificial intelligence. And welcome back. It's 446. ABC News has an exclusive interview with Bill Gates on several topics, including the rapid rise of artificial intelligence. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive, one-on-one -on -one with Bill Gates. You've got a fake image of the Pope, fake images of President Joe Biden. At some point, if those proliferate at a much greater scale, won't that confuse people about what the truth is? The co-founder of Microsoft on nuclear energy, artificial intelligence, and jobs. You've put billions of dollars towards this project. Why are you so committed to nuclear energy? Well, nuclear energy, uh, if we do it right, will help us solve our climate goals. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more of our exclusive interview with Bill Gates, including what the tech titan has to say about the rapid rise of artificial intelligence. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Let's look at the roads with Transguide. It's still kind of quiet over there at 281 at Hildebrand. And on my way to work, I didn't see too many problems, but I know we may ex expect rain in some areas later today. Yeah, the rest of the week could be very interesting. Yes, Mike? Purple lights out there? Yeah, I, I saw that too. I noticed that. It's uh, unmistakable. But you know what's weird is some of these newer light bulbs they're putting in the street lights around here uh. have a blue or purplish hue to a them. Tent. I've oh, noticed a couple of them. It? Yeah. Matches your dress. Yeah. yeah. Your time. We planned it. Yeah. It, it was planned. <laughs> All right. Yeah. This week, uh, we, <laughs> the, what we've been praying for is rain. And unfortunately, then there's the chance we're going to get too much of a good thing. So we're going to have to watch that for, you know, the spots of some locally heavy downpours here and there. I mean, look at the beautiful rain. This was uh, down in Quero, three inches of rain with some of the storms there. Absolutely fantastic. But with now it in places, the ground getting a little more saturated and all this humidity in place, we got to watch out again for some heavy downpours. Maybe a flooding threat is going to be something that we're going to have to keep in the back of our minds, not only later on today, but especially going on into later on in the week. So it's murky looking out there. Look at that glow around some of those street lights. The road may be a bit damp. Here's the leftover showers right now. Those are some stronger storms in the overnight hours and a couple of lightning strikes are left over and that looks like it's sort of fizzling on out, kind of heading down to the east southeast. Other than that, I mean, this is all just sort of some clutter, but there could be a couple of, uh, you know, little spots of mist here and there. We do have a hint of fog, Port Assa, New Braunfels, Gonzales. Once again, we'll just have to watch out for it because of that moisture in the ground and temperatures are upper 60s, low 70s, a good five Five, six, seven degrees above their respective normals. Bunch of humidity out there. Get used to it or grin and bear it, whatever the case may be, because the humidity is not going anywhere. But at least, yes, it is going to get squeezed out in the form of some rain. So got the 10% chance in here. 
just a stray little, I mean, a sprinkle, something like that. We'll start to see a bit of sunshine. We make it up into the low to mid 80s today at noon, and then we're going to top off later on this afternoon, getting up into the low 90s. So today will, though, be the hottest day. Now, yesterday, of course, we, with all the clouds out there, they held in there tough. We had some of those showers around. We'll still have a couple of showers developing then later on this afternoon, and then more storms going into tonight. So, and it's interesting looking at different computer models. Once again, they all have basically different solutions, but here's the one I favor the most. There's going to be some storms developing out there in portions of the hill country and then another system coming in off of uh, the mountains of Mexico. And then by later on tonight, they'll sort of join forces just a little bit and we'll have to watch out for that. And then the potential for some heavy rain in parts of the hill country and a couple of showers to start off tomorrow. Then we go in through the day tomorrow and there once again tomorrow night will be the threat for for a couple of uh, spots of some very heavy rain, especially in portions of the hill country. Some of the storms later on tonight are going to be strong to severe Again, heavy downpours is something we have to watch out for and the isolated chance for one of those here in town. But uh, out in the hill country, the better chance for uh, some high winds as well as hail. I want to run through the next few days very quickly, and this is again is a broad brush computer model, but it does have more chances of rain, uh, just the scattered variety. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but then we go into the weekend and we're going to have some pockets of some heavier rain. So it is looking like it's going to be a very wet weekend around here. And again, got to keep in mind then the threat for potentially flooding situations with uh, some of these heavier downpours. 86, mostly cloudy skies today at noon. High temperature is going to make it up to 91. A couple of showers and thunderstorms developing in the hill country potentially severe tonight. Also on top of that, heavy rain and then that'll be overnight tomorrow. The chance for some heavy rain as well. Basically in parts of the hill country, we'll have that threat here in town uh, we'll, on a smaller scale. 85 at least temperatures are going to be staying mid 80s. Humidity is going to be yeah, it's rampant keeping those lows in the 70s and just a scattered shower here or there. Best chances of rain are going to be today, tomorrow, hill country and then over the weekend and 80s over the weekend. Time to build up our rain bank as we head into the summer months, right? Yeah, which is nice. But again, in at times it's going to be mm -hmm. too much of a good thing, you know, feast famine type situation. So but uh, yeah, at least we are getting the rain. Just don't want it to be on the heavy side. All right, we'll watch out for it. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. 452, 71 degrees. Up next, Taylor Swift is announcing the release date of the re-recorded version of her 2010 Grammy winning third album, Speak Now. Here are your lottery numbers now. Pick three numbers, 951 Fireball 3, Daily 4, 8607 Fireball 0. Cash 5, 16, 17, 21, 28, 32. Lotto, Texas, 13, 17, 22, 41, 51, 53. And your Powerball numbers, 31, 39, 47, 51, 53, Powerball 6, Power Play 2. Good luck. Five till Star Lord leads his guardians to the top of the box office. Plus, Taylor Swift talks about the re-recorded version of her album, Speak Now. For our latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. I'm Star Lord. It's a $114 million domestic opening for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. That's only a few million short of forecasts, with international numbers bringing the global bow to a very respectable $282 million. We're always searching for a family until we found each other. Guardians knocks the Super Mario Brothers movie into second, granting Chris Pratt bragging rights for starring in the number one and two movies that also had the two biggest debuts of the year. All you're ever gonna be is me. Taylor Swift says the re-recorded version of her 2010 Grammy-winning third album, Speak Now, will be released July 7th. Swift's been re-recording so-called Taylor's versions of her first six studio albums in the wake of a dispute with her former record label, which sold the masters against her wishes. Some 19 million Brits watched King Charles's coronation Saturday, nine million fewer than watched Queen Elizabeth's funeral last year. Good luck, little leather man. And legendary British naturalist Sir David Attenborough is 97 Monday. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. Time now, 456 and 71 degrees for now. This morning, federal officials trying to find the motive for that deadly shooting up in Allen near Dallas. Up next, an update on the seven people wounded and a special announcement by the Texas State Senator, Roland Gutierrez.
And we are going to show you the special centennial birthday celebration held this weekend that was steeped in San Antonio history. And checking the roads with Transguide. If you're out the door this early, we understand quite a few of you do watch our first half hour and then head off to work or school. There's I-10 at Hildebrand. Stephen Cavazos is in the studio looking bright and fresh and smiley. We'll talk to him coming up. <laughs> Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The investigation continues this morning after eight people were killed in a Texas mass shooting. I'm Lindsay Watts. Coming up, why federal authorities are looking at the shooter's possible ties to white supremacy. Outside with live cam back here at home, plenty of humidity to go around. You can cut it with a knife this morning. About 71 degrees and Mike says prepare for a wet week here in South Central Texas. Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a nice weekend. It is Monday, May 8th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, time to get your maybe second cup of coffee to help you this Monday morning. That's right. And uh, right back behind us here, we're our, is our brand new LED wall here. Yes. And I heard this thing is so crisp. It'll be like a bald eagle. You could see a trout from like 20 miles away <laughs> with that vision. Well, that'll, that'll be helpful for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's crisp and I like I like the analogy. <laughs> Thank you. Came out of nowhere. Anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah this week, uh, keep an umbrella handy, rain jacket. Uh, we, this is what we've been wishing for is some rain, but in some instances, it may be too much here and there. We'll talk about that in a moment. 70 right now, and 68 is the dew point, so a bunch of humidity out there. You have Factor those two numbers together, you get 93% relative humidity. The temperatures are going to just continue to climb up. Yesterday, we stayed in the low 80s thanks to the cloud covering some of those showers, but we'll have a bit more sunshine later on today, and that's going to get us up to 91, so well above normal. All that humidity, heat index is definitely going to be something that will grab your attention. The aquifer went up two tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading, and the allergens, just low amounts of mold and grass out there. All right, take a look outside right now, and uh, this is what's on radar. Still just a couple of leftover showers, even a well one or two lightning strikes are still being detected. But as you can see, this continues to drift well down to the uh, east to southeast, moving into uh, maybe a couple of those showers. Live Oak County, if you're heading down 37, you may run into a leftover shower. Now elsewhere, a couple little sprinkles are going to be possible. Maybe some mist just because we do have those hints of fog here and there. Seven miles visibility, Gonzalez, New Braunfels, six at Port S.A., a little bit around Stinson. So once again, just something we got to kind of be on the lookout for. So a couple of showers and thunderstorms going to be developing late this afternoon, especially in the hill country. Now we are going to be in the low 90s. And like I said, very, very humid. Then we go into tonight. A few of those storms, some severe. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats. Also, a couple of heavy downpours can't be ruled out. That's something we're going to have to definitely be on the lookout for. And then as we go into midweek, a couple of showers and storms here and there will be in the 80s, low to mid 80s, close to a normal high temperature. So that'll be a relief. Today is actually going to be the hottest day of the next seven days. Then we go into the weekend and we're looking at more showers and thunderstorms, a better chance as well as some more heavy rain. Going to take a look at all the uh, specifics and heading in toward what will Mother's Day be specifically details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos morning, sir. Anything going on yet? Well, we're off to a good start over here, Mike. Thankfully, the, mo the Monday morning commute it shouldn't be too bad for a lot of folks that are waking up right now. Let's get a quick look around town. There's 35 North at Loop 410. You can see there's really not a lot going on behind me. 35 at New Braunfels. Yeah, we know people are waking up to get their day started, but thankfully there should not be any major issues out there. We did have some overnight construction but it looks like that has already wrapped up. That was a little bit f uh, further up I-10 near Kerrville. But right now, back here in town, 1604 at Spurs Ranch, traffic has been light throughout the morning, which is why we see a lot of green on the screen behind me. Again, the big talking point will likely be a lot of the construction that could cause some delays a little bit later in the morning. We'll get to that a little later on. But let's talk about travel times for those that need to head out the door and head here to the Alamo City. The journey from Bernie shouldn't be too bad, about 24 minutes at this hour. 281 southbound, if you're heading in from Bolverde, well, there's no need to hurry there. 26 minutes and I 35 southbound from New Braunfels. It's not too awful there, guys. 25 minutes. So perfect opportunity to take advantage of some quiet roadways back here in town. 37 at 410 is very quiet and the same for here near 181. We'll continue to watch the roads closely and I'll be back with an update on some of those road closures that could impact your commute. More on that a little bit later on. Mark. Thank you. New this morning, a driver crashed into a business on San Antonio's north side overnight. It happened just after midnight in the 200 block of Brana Drive. 
That's just west of Highway 281. San Antonio police say the driver crashed into a storefront for custom truck parts. Police say he was arrested for the possibility of DWI. No one was hurt. Happening today at 10 a.m., Texas State Senator Roland Gutierrez is holding a press conference calling for gun legislation in light of the Allen Outlet Mall shooting. Now, this comes at the same time as a deadline for Texas House committees to turn in their bills to be placed on the House's calendar for discussion. This February, the House Speaker created the Select Committee on Community Safety to handle bills related to firearm possession, sale, use, and transfer. Since the start of the regular session, that committee has had 139 bills submitted only 29 have made it out of committee. Now the other 110 are in jeopardy of missing the deadline to progress. Some, something lives, ro excuse me, something lives Rob Secretary Berlinda Ariola says it's unacceptable. I just don't understand what it would take for everyone to understand how real this is, how traumatic this is, how it's not going to stop. You know, if we don't make a change, it's just common sense gun laws. There has been no explanation from the committee chair as to why the other 110 bills have not progressed or been called for a vote. Just before Gutierrez's press conference, there is a rally planned by Texas Gun Sense, a coalition of gun violence prevention groups in Austin to push the committee to take action. That's happening at 9 a.m. Meanwhile, a community is now grieving for lives lost Saturday during a shooting rampage in that outlet mall north of Dallas. Seven others injured in the attack, three of them still in critical condition. As ABC's Lindsay Watts reports, this was just shy of the 200th mass shooting in the U.S. so far this year. We have shots fired at the outlet mall. Video shows the gunman jumping out of a car Saturday with an AR-15 style rifle. He then opens fire on people at an outdoor shopping center in Allen, Texas, just north of Dallas. I hid behind a freezer and we, everybody thought that we were doomed. At least eight people were killed, including a five-year-old boy. To see these first responders act, you know, visibly shaken and crying and sick and trying to catch their breath and trying to understand what was going on, that will always be in my mind. A vigil was held Sunday for the victims who lost their lives and for those still fighting to overcome injuries. Overnight officials said seven people are still hospitalized, including three in critical condition. The shooter was killed after an officer on a different call ran toward the gunfire. Law enforcement sources tell ABC News the gunman was wearing a patch associated with white supremacists. They say the FBI is looking at his writings and clothing for other links to extremist ideology. Authorities say in 2008, the suspect was discharged from the Army for mental health concerns. Police have searched his home in Dallas. We believe at this point that the shooter acted alone. This is the 199th mass shooting in the country so far this year. President Biden says it's too shocking to be so familiar, again calling on Congress to ban assault weapons. Gun reform advocates plan to rally today at the Texas Capitol in Austin. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. And look for more KSAT coverage on activities up in Austin today. 507, 70 degrees. Tired of those extra boring meetings on Microsoft Teams? <laughs> well, up next, how Microsoft is trying to keep you awake a little longer. Okay, good luck. And up next, we'll take you to the birthday celebration of the oldest living lasso in San Antonio. How cool. Let's look out there with a live cam starting at 70 degrees. No rain in this shot, but we are expecting rain later today in some areas and actually throughout the week. We're going to check in with Mike with all of those chances coming up. A centennial birthday celebration was held this weekend. And it was steeped, steeped in San Antonio history. This is a great day in my life. <laughs> I mean, who would have ever thought I'd be here in this city? <laughs> Oh, Dorothy, bless her. Dorothy Hughes was 16 when she joined the famous Jefferson High School Lassos back in 1936. Well, this past weekend, she turned 100 years old, making her the oldest living lasso. Lasso's rope and dance team has been famous nationwide. And one of the things Hughes is most proud of, she has lived a life full of adventure and service. And this weekend, she reminisced about those priceless moments in a room packed with friends and family. <laughs> They're wonderful, boy. Yep. And I had so many wonderful memories of so many of you as the what you've been to me through the years.
Hughes and her contractor husband built University United Methodist Church on Days of Allah, where this 100th birthday party was held. That's one of her right there by Clark High School yeah. on Days of Allah. Happy, happy birthday. happy birthday, 1936. Let that soak in for a I second. I know, that's so cool. I love the pictures, the great memories as well. Happy birthday, ma'am. Birthday. 512, 70 degrees. Coming up next, Twitter reveals how private circle tweets somehow became public last month. And Tuss unveils its new Model S plaid track package. Up next, the top speed you can go if you unlock it. Let's check the roads of Trans Guy. Looking over at Loop 1604 at Kitty Hawk. Things are moving there, and some of the other cameras look pretty good too. They're at Loop 410 at Somerset Road. Later on, we will check in with our Stephen Cavazos. When I first started Ancestry, I had no idea what to expect. Ethnicity and heritage. Nigerian East Central from you. Benin, my dad's side, is 30% Japanese. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> I love how it gives you a little bit of history. Yeah, I feel like reading this, like these are my roots. There's just still so much to discover. Now on sale for Mother's Day. If you have diabetes, it's important to have confidence in the nutritional drink you choose. Try Boost Glucose Control. It's clinically shown to help manage blood sugar levels and contains high quality protein to help manage hunger and support muscle health. Try Boost today. Just between us, you know what's better than mopping? Anything. Ugh. Well, I switched to Swiffer WetJet and it's awesome. It's an all-in-one that absorbs dirt and grime deep inside and it helps prevent streaks and hay. WetJet is so worth it. Love it or your money back. 516, Twitter has confirmed that a security issue caused private tweets to go out to the public. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Twitter out with a new apology. The platform says a security incident led to private circle tweets made public last month. And while apologizing, Twitter also says the issue was immediately fixed. The company did not say exactly what that security incident involved. Next, Microsoft Teams is adding new animated backgrounds. It's the biggest update to the backgrounds in Teams since the original collection launched in 2020. The new backgrounds will be rolling out next month. Finally, Tesla just unveiled a new package that unlocks a top speed of 200 miles per hour on its Model S. The Plaid Track package costs up to $20,000. It includes ceramic brakes, wheels, and tires that are optimized for performance and track usage. Just remember, before buying an electric car, make sure your driver's license is current. Current. Those are your tech bites. <laughs> is there like a master's or a doctorate in dad jokes? Because I, I think Andrew has achieved both. I like that he tries. He tries. Yeah, I'll give him that. Yes. Without fail. Yeah, unapologetic. Yes. He leaves so us scratching our heads sometimes, so I will say. Also some true. better than others, but yeah. Yeah, some are better than others. But you know what? We're not seeing vehicle, vehicles go that fast out on the roadways, thankfully. Uh, things have been moving at a pretty steady pace as we get a quick look around town. There's 35 at New Braunfels, and uh, yeah, there's not really a lot of folks this early in the morning, but we do know some of you have to travel in the next few minutes or so. Uh, this is really what you can expect. 35 at Bam C and even there at Pine. Light traffic is how we're starting this new work week, but just be on the lookout because it does look like we have a stalled vehicle right here at 30 at part of me uh, 410 northbound there at FM 78 or Seguin Road. This is not causing any issues, but a lot of folks tend to travel through there as the morning commute really does get moving. So watch out and check your vehicles before you get out on the roadway. And as a quick reminder, a little bit later this morning along 281 on the north side of San Antonio, we will see some asphalt work taking place. This is going to take us all the way up until Sunday, May 14th. Now the work starts here at nine in the morning morning as it says on the screen, but it should wrap at three in the afternoon. During the week, we're going to see alternating lane closures on the frontage roads. That's in both directions right there at Bulverde Road, which is a very heavily traveled area. So just watch out, plan your commute ahead of time. Uh, I'll have an update on more construction spots a little bit later in the newscast, but right now things are moving without any big trouble, which is a great way to start the work week as more folks are getting up and getting the day started with us, Mike. Yes, and noticing a lot of those uh, cameras there on the street lights, very, very kind of fuzzy around because got so much humidity out there. First of all, great picture down in comfort from yesterday and lots of clouds. Sun tried to squeeze on through, but boy, those clouds held tough and it wasn't bad. I mean, the humidity did get up there at times, but with those temperatures that stayed in the low 80s yesterday, it was nice and a few little light sprinkly 
showers and over there by 410 by the airport. Everything's moving along smoothly. Road appears to be on the dry side. The only rain being picked up on radar. This leftover little line of showers, which continues to work its way down to the southeast. One or two lightning strikes are still left over, but this is going to continue to fizzle out and then elsewhere. Nothing's detected on radar, but again, there may be a little light sprinkle some mist here and there mid upper 60s, low 70s. Temperatures are a good five, six, seven degrees above the respective normals, and we're going to stay steady as is usually the case with all this humidity out there as well as the uh, the cloud cover, and we will see a 10% chance for Again, a sprinkle, a little mist, maybe even a patch or two of fog. Fog's not a, a big issue as of right now, just hints of it here and there. Mid 80s already at noon. Going to be hot, it's going to be humid. 91 for a high temperature. We'll start to see some showers and thunderstorms developing then later on this afternoon, primarily in the hill country, which is what that takes into account. And here's a different computer model from last half hour. A lot of clouds hanging around here, a little bit of sunshine thrown in later on today and two areas of concern, one coming in off the mountains of Mexico, the other developing out there in portions of the hill country. So we're going to continue to watch these two features here and Heavy rain is also going to be an issue. We still have the threat for some severe weather with these, but we'll have to watch out for some heavier downpours, especially in portions of the uh, hill country. And then this particular computer model has this system kind of hanging in there overnight and then in through tomorrow. Watch this. I put this into motion as well. You can sort of see a bit of a counterclockwise rotation around here. This is there's a low sort of sitting on top of us, and that's why these things keep kind of spinning on in here. And then tomorrow we're going to have to watch out for uh, that cell as far as potentially some heavier downpours. That's going to be the case not only today, tomorrow, but also then again over the weekend. Now today we do have the severe threat in parts of the hill country, especially with that system trying to develop northwest hill country. That's where the scattered uh, heavier storms, potentially severe high winds and hail are going to be the uh, the biggest threats with that. And again, again, pardon me, jumping into the future, we've got the chance for rain today, tomorrow, a couple of scattered showers Wednesday, Thursday, even Friday, but then going into Saturday, that's when we're going to start to see the potential for more heavy rain as well as on Sunday. So again, this is what we've been wishing for. Wishes are coming true, but we are going to get too much at times. It's forecast today, 86 at noon, mostly cloudy skies. We will see some sunshine out there. That's going to help to warm us up to 91. A couple of showers and thunderstorms will be developing, potentially severe in portions of the hill country. Again, high winds, hail, biggest threats, but also some heavier downpours. Now, tomorrow, We'll have to watch out for a few heavy downpours as well. Then going into sort of the mid to latter part of the week, it's going to be more of just here and there rain, but then rain chances definitely start to pick back up over the weekend. Good side, positive side temperatures will be held down because of the cloud cover. But yeah, we will definitely have to watch out for some uh, heavier downpours. That cloud cover definitely helped. Yesterday it helped. Yeah, it was great. I was outside in the backyard working. It's like, oh, this isn't bad. It was a whole lot better than Saturday, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. 522, 70 degrees. And you have to wait a little longer for Stranger Things Season 5. Up next, the latest on delays caused by the writer's strike in Hollywood. Big three numbers, 951, Fireball 3, Daily 4, 8607, Fireball 0. Cash 5, 16, 17, 21, 28, 32. Lotto, Texas, 13, 17, 22, 41, 51, 53. And your Powerball numbers, 31, 39, 47, 51, 53. Powerball 6, Power Play 2. Good luck. The list of Hollywood productions stopped or delayed by the writer's strike continues to grow. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. I don't have my powers. The Writers Guild's labor dispute with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers has disrupted the final season of Stranger Things. The Duffer Brothers, the show's creators, posted on Twitter, writing does not stop when filming begins. While we're excited to start production with our amazing cast and crew, it is not possible during this strike. I get intrusive thoughts. you in that void.
brain in my head was the big winner at the 10th annual Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge Awards. The short film about a couple navigating mental health issues and deafness won Best Film, Best Director for Chrissy Marshall, and Best Actor for Lane Apfel. Other awards went to Rachel Handler, Best Writer for Unlucky in Love, Nathan Cox, Best Editor for Smash or Pass, and Judith Rubin and Leap of Love for Best Awareness Campaign. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Now 527, 71 degrees. A migrant surge expected at the border as Title 42 expires this week. Up next, how both Republicans and Democrats are actually agreeing about the situation and how they're hoping to fix it. If you ever played Wii Sports, you're officially old. It's going into the Video Game Hall of Fame. Up next, the other games that are joining Wii Sports in the 23, 23 Hall of Fame class. Making headlines this morning, the U.S. and Texas ready for a sudden influx of migrants. First of all, uh, are we ready? Uh, the answer is no. President Biden is sending 1,500, quote, soldiers to do paperwork, and that's not going to secure the border. Just ahead, an update on a new border security package that's meant to replace Title 42. Let's look out there with a live cam. We are expecting the rain. The question is, will it be too much this week? Well, we're going to check back with Mike to find out. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us on this Monday. It is May 8th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, so far, so good this morning. Yes, uh, mist, drizzle, fog, kind of starting off like every other morning. We, you know, temperatures kept down, were kept down yesterday because of some of those clouds. But uh, the big question is, do we get too much rain at times? And yes, that is definitely going to be a concern today, tomorrow, as well as heading in toward the weekend. So you look outside, it looks a lot like the past couple of mornings out there. Temperatures are well above normal by a good five, six degrees. We got a bunch of humidity. Dew point stands at 69, a slight little breeze out of the uh, north to northeast as of right now. Leftover showers well down to the south. Otherwise, a lot of just clutter right around there. Nothing else is being picked up on radar, but there may be some mist or a little sprinkle here and there. And we're starting to see Couple more hints of some fog. Five miles visibility, Gonzales. Seven New Braunfels, six at Port SA. So just we'll be on the lookout as we approach sunrise to see some more of this fog trying to develop. And temperatures, like I said, all around the area are way, way above where they should be. It is a definitely kind of a soupy morning. 86 at noon, 91 high temperature. We will see a bit more sunshine than yesterday, which is going to help to get us up into the low 90s and all that humidity to deal with. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms are going to start to develop, especially in the portions of the hill country and looks like over in the mountains of Mexico and then there will be the chance for some of those storms to become severe. Heavy rain is also again going to be that threat and here's what Storm Prediction Center has basically the western two thirds of our area under the threat for an isolated stray potentially severe storm a little bit better chance in portions of the hill country so that's the the severe threat today and then heavy rain chances like i said on top of that as well as tomorrow and then going in toward next weekend as well what about temperatures details coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority so far so good well, roads are dry over here, Mike. Thankfully, it's uh, not seen any major issues out there. It's been like this pretty much for the last hour for anyone that has to wake up, get the day started early with us. But 1604 at Medio Creek almost looks like a ghost road out there. Even here at 1604 at Valley Meadow, not a lot of folks out there this early in the morning. That's always expected. We really don't see a lot of traffic this early, but we do know folks do have to travel. So we want you to be aware of this stall vehicle at 410 northbound at FM 78 or Sikin Road. This is not causing any issues for drivers, but we do want you to make sure your vehicles are working properly before you get the day started and head out on the roadways. And anytime you see those flashing lights, make sure to move over or slow down. Hopefully a TxDOT Hero truck is out there working to help this uh, situation out. But giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area and some of the surrounding communities, it's pretty green and still some of the active construction and that will be the main headline of the roadways uh, unless something major pops up. But right now let's talk about some of those travel times. If you're heading into San Antonio this early from the morning from uh, Pleasanton along I-37 northbound should be about a 20 eight minute commute. It's a perfect time to head out from Castorville because US 90 you can expect about a 30 minute drive time and that arrival from Lytle should take you about 16 minutes along I 35 northbound. But back here on this rotation, we're just seeing traffic moving without any trouble against some dry roads 35 at Bamsey, uh, but just watch out for that stall vehicle as you approach FM 78. Other than that, the roads are fine. We're going to have an update on construction spots coming up a little bit later on in this newscast. Mark.
Thank you. This morning, clouds of concern swirling around the southern border of the United States. And metaphorically speaking, a hard rain is about to fall. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, U.S. officials are preparing for a surge of migrants there. And there is worry that the country is not ready to handle the situation. As migrants are gathering at the U.S.-Mexican border, lawmakers from both parties are sounding the alarm. First of all, uh, are we ready? Uh, the answer is no. President Biden is sending 1,500, quote, soldiers to do paperwork, and that's not going to secure the border. The rise in people seeking to get into the U.S. comes in anticipation of Thursday's expiration of Title 42, the U.S. government rule that enabled border officers to expeditiously expel migrants during the COVID pandemic. The Biden administration had two years to prepare for this and did not do so. The Department of Homeland Security has repeatedly stressed the southern border is sealed and is giving fair warning to those trying to come across. The smugglers who exploit vulnerable migrants are spreading misinformation. They are spreading false information, lies in a way to lure vulnerable people to the southern border, and those individuals will only be returned. House Republicans are set to vote Thursday on a border security package to succeed Title 42. It's called HR2, and it codifies some of the programs from the Trump administration, including the Remain in Mexico policy, which says migrants have to stay in Mexico as they go through the asylum process. If it passes, it's not expected to get through the Democratic-led Senate. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says there are no good options for the United States to avoid an economic calamity if Congress fails to raise the nation's $31 trillion borrowing limit in the coming weeks. In an interview Sunday, she did not rule out President Biden acting on his own to try to avert a first ever federal default. Her comments added even more urgency to a high stakes meeting tomorrow between Biden and congressional leaders from both parties. An increase in the debt limit would not authorize new federal spending. It would only allow borrowing to pay for what Congress has already approved. Without an increase, Secretary Yellen says the U.S. could default on its debt as early as June 1st. California is one step closer to approving reparation payments for black residents. A task force created to examine possible reparations voted on this past weekend to approve its recommendations. The recommendations call for a formal apology from the state for slavery and would potentially provide billions of dollars in payments to descendants of slaves living in California. The task force will reconsider, will consider the recommendations at its meeting in June before sending them on to the state legislator for approval. Some state leaders have questions and whether California can afford the reparations. State of Maine is reporting its first case of measles since 2019. Maine Center for Disease Control and Prevention says the patient is a child. That child who tested positive had received a dose of the measles vaccine, but Maine CDC said it, quote, considered the child to be infectious out of an abundance of caution. According to the U.S. CDC, there have been 10 cases of measles in eight states so far this year. Time now, it's 537 and 71 degrees for now. 2023 class for the Video Game Hall of Fame is in. Find out if your favorite game made it into history. As interest rates keep changing, it leaves more questions about how it's impacting our money here at home. Up next, how the situation could be used as a benefit. Outside with live cam, plan ahead for the week, especially of any outdoor activities plan. Mike says it could be a wet one. We'll chat more about that coming up a little bit later on in this newscast. 540, we hear about and report on the Fed continuously raising interest rates. A specialist with Victory Capital joined Max Massey on Leading SA this weekend to break it all down, and he's giving some advice to families who have college in their future. Monic Dillon joined us live. We talked about a lot. We talked about the latest interest rate hikes. We talked about the purpose of these hikes. And we also talked about ways to make college for so many local families much more manageable. Here's a bit of our conversation. Inflation leads to more expensive tuition bills over time. A college savings plan is a great tool to help combat that because it can participate in increasing prices in stocks and bonds as inflation starts to pick up. So you can try to keep pace. And the best way to do that is in a consistent way. So a lot of our clients, we, we talk to them about using what's called an automatic investment plan. So that way you're not having to time the market and whether you're saving for college or retirement. 
and just continuously put a little bit of money to work every month, every quarter. And that way you can enter and save in, in a more smooth aspect over time. And so a college savings plan can be a great way to combat what inflation does to tuition bills. We also discussed saving rates, bonds, and some ways to try to take advantage of these higher interest rate environments. Now you can check out the full conversation right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. We have Leading Essay every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. Thank you, Max. 542, 71 degrees. Up next, we still have one of those at-home COVID tests. Listen up. We have an important recall about one that could have some potentially harmful bacteria. Checking Transguide right now, 1604 at... Valley Meadow traffic looks great right now. Roads are dry. Going to be a game changer later this week, though. Mike says we need to be on the lookout for too much rain. We'll be back. And welcome back. It's 545 in your morning consumer headlines. Check your medicine cabinet. The FDA is announcing a recall of pilot brand COVID-19 at home test. The order says the liquid buffer solution may be contaminated with potentially harmful bacteria. The manufacturer, Biosensor Incorporated, issued the voluntary recall. Users are advised to throw the entire test in the trash, to not open the vials of liquid, and to not pour anything down the drain. No illnesses have been reported. World Video Game Hall of Fame has announced its class of 2023. The no-brainer inductees are Wii Sports, which launched the Nintendo Wii craze back in 2006 and enters the world to motion controls. Also, The Last of Us. That game was a mega hit in 2013 and spawned the critically acclaimed HBO series of the same name. The list also includes some odd ducks, a little known computer space that came out in 1971. The museum calls the first commercial, commercial it the first commercial coin operated video game. Also, Barbie fashion designer came out in 96. That game lets players design clothes that can be printed out and put on a Barbie doll. The museum says the game proved computer games marketed to girls could succeed. World Video Game Hall of Fame is at the Strong Museum up in Rochester, New York. It's hard to believe they're in a museum. Like some of those that you thought were super new. Well, they're not, <laughs> not, not so new not anymore. anymore. No. Time now, 546. Let's check back with our Steven Cavazos. I had a Wii, and yeah. uh, I, it's somewhere back at home, but uh, I need to hold on to that. Probably still works. It probably does. Yeah, uh, that was good times, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I guess, uh, what did you say earlier? That I guess that makes us old now? It does. Uh. <laughs> All right, that's okay. Well, because we're feeling great regardless about what we're seeing behind me in traffic. 30, uh, 37 at Cesar Chavez, you can see traffic's moving, but getting a little bit busier now that we're inching closer closer to 6 a.m. There's Tenet Crossroads, the east and westbound lanes getting a little bit more crowded out there. So just watch out because obviously the more cars we see out there, the more problems could present themselves. So uh, point uh, right here, 37, 410 northbound at FM 78. We actually have a stalled vehicle. So with more people out there, they want to be aware of these stalled vehicles that are off on the shoulder lanes. This does not seem to be causing any issues for drivers as of yet, but it's still very early. So just make sure to move over or slow down. Now the wide view of the metro metropolitan area, it's still pretty quiet. So if you have to head out, then you're in luck. But there's still plenty of construction to talk about, especially later in the week. We want you to be ahead because I-10 in Kendall County, we have painting work that's going to start tomorrow. And it's actually going to take us up to Wednesday, May 10th. The work starts at 9 in the morning and should wrap at 3 in the afternoon. We'll see the eastbound ramp to US 87 close during that time. But, uh, you know, I-10 is one of those areas where there is plenty of construction. So this is no surprise there. But still, plan your commute ahead of time. Uh, back here on Trans Guide, things have been moving without any trouble, so that's a good start to a Monday morning, I say. Agreed. It is. Not too bad. Not too bad yesterday either. Today, a different story. Today's going to be more like Saturday, well, so because Saturday was just yeah, that, that humidity. Was. So And yeah, I don't know what's better, the picture or the caption where it says temperatures in the 80s. We stayed in the low 80s thanks to all those clouds yesterday, but... Yeah, that's a pretty that's darn, really nice. that's that's a really darn good looking picture from Mr. McClellan over there at Woodlawn Lake. Thank you very much for that, sir. Yeah, we got lots of clouds hanging around here this morning, obviously, and the glow around the lights, plenty of humidity. Uh, still watching those few little leftover showers just continue to fizzle on out and just move on out of our area. Nothing else is being picked up on radar as of right now. Upper 60s, low 70s. 
five, six, seven degrees on average above normal. And of course, a bunch of humidity. We had Stinson at 70 right now for a dew point temperature. And at one point over the weekend, dew points were getting well up into the low and even close to mid 70s around here. And that's why it was so humid, especially on Saturday. Uh, now, what's interesting, though, is dew points compared to yesterday actually down just a little bit in a couple of spots. But don't let that fool you when you step outside. It's still really darn humid and temperatures are going to hold steady all morning long. Small chance for a little sprinkle here or there. We'll see more sunshine later on today. That's going to really heat things up. And of course, we've got all that humidity to deal with. So that 91 with a couple of thunderstorms trying to develop in portions of the hill country late this afternoon going into this evening, as well as over uh, to the west in the mountains of Mexico. So 91, though, is going to be feeling like the mid and upper 90s when you factor in the humidity later on this afternoon. And the other nice thing was having that cloud cover at least, which helped to keep things more tolerable. But with that sunshine, I mean, that just adds to it. And of course, always got to Keep in mind, all temperatures, everything like that are taken in the shade. So if you're on the direct sun, if the sun does come through, that just heats you up. You're not just feeling the air temperature, but the sun is, is heating you up as well. And that's why you really got to be careful out there as we start to see all this humidity. So by this evening, a uh, couple of showers are trying to develop. But notice over there by the mountains of Mexico and then up in the hill country where we will start to see things really get going. So really, I've got that chance for rain this afternoon or late this afternoon by dinner time, but it's going to be this evening when things start to get going. And some of those heavier downpours can be expected as well. And then those will continue to move through in the overnight hours. We're going to have to watch it tomorrow morning for a few uh, leftover showers and then another chance for some rain later on. Severe threat does exist to the west, western about two thirds of our viewing area and a slightly better chance out there in parts of the uh, hill country. And again, we keep rain chances around really for the rest of the week. I think we see chances for some heavy rain today as well as tomorrow. And then once again, going in toward the weekend. Now, any any storm that may pop up could have a you know decent downpour here and there, but better overall chances for some uh, wide or some heavier rain is going to be today, tomorrow, as well as the weekend. 86 at noon today, part, mostly cloudy skies, high temperature, 91. A couple of showers and thunderstorms will begin to develop more of those are going to be tonight and some of those may be severe with high winds and hail and of course have to watch out then for the uh, heavier downpours to rain chance every day now it's not going to rain constantly it's not going to rain everywhere but those chances will exist cloud cover is going to help to keep temperatures actually slightly below normal after today and then we're shaping up right now for a fairly wet weekend all the way through mother's day yes okay at least Mom's flowers will get a little drink <laughs> so out there. Yeah. Gonna leave them on the porch? Yeah. yeah. Okay, got Be nice it. and fresh. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 551, 71 degrees. Up next, a first look at a new streaming series that follows the adventures of Muppets Band, Dr. Teeth, and the Electric Mayhem. The Mayhem? They taught Molly Crew how to shred and party. They tattooed their name on me when I was passed out. What? The Muppets Mayhem chronicles the adventures of Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem finally recording their debut album. Well, we got a little sidetracked by the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. You see these characters growing up, and now to be a part of it is just mind blowing. I never thought to myself, like, oh yeah, one day I'm gonna like be doing a scene with Animal. Daba, yeah. Be a good animal. The human cast members share a favorite Muppet band member. Lips. I felt really cool, I'm not gonna lie, being like the character, the human character in the show that understands him. I feel like I talk to Lips the most when we're not filming. Mm. Uh, yeah. So it's like Lips calls me what my grandma calls me. <laughs> like it's so, so cute. We wanted them to feel real, uh, that they're in our world, if you want to believe in that, and uh, ground their stories, give them real stories, create more dimension to their characters so that they can feel like they exist with us. Time to hunker down and write some symphonious songs to sing for our selection of snaztastic suitors. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Right now it's 556. If you're just now joining us, here's what you've missed today on GMSA.
This morning, an Amber Alert for a San Antonio teenager, 14 year old Jules Robinson, 5'6, 130 pounds, has black hair, brown eyes. Last seen around midnight, May 1st, in the 900 block of Classen Pass. Law enforcement officials believe this child is to be in grave or immediate danger. Due this morning, a driver crashed into a business on San Antonio's north side overnight. It happened just after midnight in the 200 block of Brana Drive. That's just west of Highway 281. San Antonio police say the driver crashed into a storefront for custom truck parts. Police say he was arrested for the possibility of DWI. No one was hurt. And Sunday's 105 game will be a mark in the park. <laughs> I like that. If anyone was asleep, they're awake. They're awake now. They're awake now. You're welcome. <laughs> Is there like a master's or a doctorate in dad jokes? Because I, I think Andrew has achieved both. I like that he tries. He tries. I'll give him that. Yes. Without fail. Yeah, an yes. apologetic. At least so scratching our heads. <laughs> We were referring to ABC's Andrew Dimbert, whose reports we see pretty much every day here on GMSA. Well, ahead in the next hour of the morning show, starting today, backpacks and large purses are no longer allowed on campuses in Southwest Independent School District. Plus, well, a tradition over a thousand years old. We're taking a deep dive into the crowning of Mary that's celebrated in the month of May. Up next, we're getting caught up on the city elections from the weekend. Look who's taking over city council and who's coming back. At checking Transguide right now, tapping the brakes. That last shot. Here's I-10 at Probant. No problems to report. Lots of humidity showing up in those streetlights before the sun is up on your early Monday morning, and you're watching GMSA. We're thankful for that. We'll be right back after this break.